Shalom. I'm a Messianic Rabbi, Zef Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. What does it mean, waiting on God, and what are the requirements that the Bible teaches us? God's timing is perfect. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Psalms, Tehillim 27, verse 13 and 14. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Lamentations 3, verse 25. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. There is a biblical pattern to wait for the Lord. And everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. Colossians chapter 1, verse 11. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Waiting on the Lord is joy. Waiting on the Lord is perfect timing. Even if it doesn't look perfect, even if it doesn't feel perfect, God said it's perfect. But the question is, how do we wait for the Lord? What does the Bible teach us? What are the requirements? Today, we're going to have a look at what the Bible requires us and how the Holy Spirit enables us to wait for the Lord. The first biblical requirement is that you need to trust the Lord. Trusting the Lord is the first biblical requirement. You can't wait on the Lord if you don't trust him. Because when you say, God, I'm trusting you, you know that God's timing is perfect. You know that God knows what's good for you. You say, God, I'm waiting for you because I know that you know what I need. I know that you see what's going to happen. I know that you can guide me through. And so many times we wait on the Lord and things don't happen at the speed we want it to happen. But if we trust him, we know that he works all things for good. Trusting him, saying, Lord, Yeshua, I know that your timing is always right. And so every decision that we make in life, everything that we do, we need to ask the Lord. And if we don't get an answer immediately, we need to wait upon the Lord, trust him. It's not that he's trying to deprive us of anything. He knows what's good for us. And many times when he tells us to wait or he tells us to do something, we feel that it's not logical. Well, it's not logical because it's supernatural. And the question is, are we willing to trust God in everything we do before we make a decision? That's the question here, because that's the key on waiting to God. Are we willing to wait on God before we make a decision? You may be asking, how do I know? what God's timing is. The Bible says, ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it'll be open to you. That's what the Bible says, and I'm paraphrasing. That is, God is willing to show you the truth if you're willing to ask him. Now, if you're living in sin and disobedience to God, you're probably not going to hear him. Well, this is speaking about believers who want to do the right thing, who want to seek first the kingdom of heaven, who want Yeshua to be the Lord of their life. It takes faith to wait on the Lord, to wait on Yeshua. Waiting on the Lord doesn't mean you're always going to get what you want. Trusting the Lord means I believe that his timing is perfect and he'll answer the prayer in his perfect time. So the question is, would you say that you have enough faith in God and waiting for him when you have decisions to make in your life? It takes faith to wait. And many times people think if I don't get it now, I won't get it. If I don't do it now, it won't be done. Let me ask you a question. Is there anything too hard for God? No. Can God control any and every circumstance. Yes. If God tells you to wait, do you think something is going to slip out from under God's care? No. If we'll just stop and think the power of God, the wisdom of God, the love of God, the knowledge of God, we're not going to miss anything that we're supposed to have by waiting on God. If God doesn't provide something that you're asking for and you trust him, maybe the Lord is not giving it to you because maybe he knows you don't need it, or maybe he knows it's not the time yet. It all boils down to this. Do you trust the Lord or not? Another requirement for waiting upon God is patience. I'm going to say it again. Another requirement for waiting upon God is patience. In Psalms 37, three times, Psalms 37, verse 1, do not fret. Second time, Psalms 37, verse 7, rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him, do not fret. And in Psalms 37, verse 8, he says, do not fret. Three times he says this in that Psalms. That is, don't let yourself get anxious about it if you can ask God. That's what King David is saying. If I were to ask you, do you believe God loves you? You would say yes. What would you include in love? Wouldn't you include good advice, good guidance, provision, health, strength, energy? Wouldn't you include those things in God's love and guidance for you? 
Yes, you would. If you believe that God says who he is, that he died on the tree on the cross for our sins, he rose on the third day, and by his blood, all who repent and believe have full redemption of sins and eternal life. If you believe that he says who he is, then you need to put all your trust, all your patience on him. And that means that's the right time to make a purchase, the right time to do this, and the right time to do that. All your decisions. Should I get this particular job? Should I move to this city? All your decisions need to be made by Yeshua HaMashiach, by Jesus, by God. Do you believe that God has your best interest in heart? If you believe that, you're going to wait. Many times I hear people saying, I don't have any time to waste. Listen very carefully. You never waste any time waiting on God. You'll always find out that his timing is exactly the right time. It takes faith. It takes patience. It takes courage that can only be done through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can enable you to do that because it's not logical. It's supernatural because greater is he in you than the one in the world. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. And I love this Bible verse. Have I not commanded you, be strong, courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Let's give a praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the great I am. He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. Joshua 1 verse 9. Let's read that again. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, and do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go, hallelujah. And that is the biblical key on waiting on God. You say, what's the requirements? Waiting on God. The word of God is a requirement. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and everything will be added to you. And so if you're going to trust the Lord, you need to trust his time. It takes courage to say no to offers. I'll never forget, many, many years ago, I received an email from somebody in Atlanta, in America, and they said, Zev, we want to buy you a building in Israel worth over $4 million. Well, my first reaction was, praise the Lord. It's going to be a place for worship. It's going to be a place to preach the gospel. I was excited. I went to sleep at night, and about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke me up, and he said, Zev, I want you to go look at their website. Go look who they are. I opened the website, and I was in complete shock. It was a gay church. It was a pastor that was promoting being gay, and he wanted to penetrate into Israel by buying us a building. It was a trap from Satan. It looked like the right thing. It looked like a blessing. It was a temptation from Satan. If I would not listen to the word of God, if I would not listen to his voice, I would have fallen in that trap. So it takes courage to make the right decisions. And so we need the wisdom of God to make decisions in life. Not everything that looks good is really good. Not everything that seems to be the right decision is the right decision. We need to ask the Holy Spirit. We need to ask Yeshua, God, to guide us. And that takes patience, that takes courage, and that takes trust. And that is the biblical pattern all through the Bible. Those who listened to the Lord were blessed. And those who didn't listen to the Lord were not blessed. Those who feared man ended up in a very bad situation. You can't be a God pleaser and a man pleaser. You can't serve two masters. I can tell you many times when I had to make very difficult decisions, the decisions looked good to me, but the Lord said, don't do it. And sometimes I would ask him in prayer, why not? And I would not get an answer, but I trusted him and knew that he works all things for good. And many times later in the future, I would see, oh, that's what happened. Oh, that's what he was protecting me from. And many times I would not see but I knew that he has my best interest and I put all my trust in him. And that's the way we're supposed to operate as believers in the Holy Spirit in this fallen world. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. It doesn't say some things. It says all things. Many times we're put in situations in life where we're offered things by people who love us or people who want good for us. And we have to say no because the Lord told us to say no. And many times those people don't understand, but we have to, we explain to them in love that we prayed and God told us not to do it. And sometimes they'll understand and sometimes they won't, but we can't serve two masters. We can't be man pleasers. We have to be God pleasers. When God tells me what to do, 
I do exactly what he says, and I can't require of God to tell me why. Sometimes he'll tell you why, sometimes he won't. And I can tell you that I've had situations where six, eight, even a year later, God revealed to me why. But was I angry at that time? No. Did I question God at that time? No. I put my faith in him and knows that he works all things for good. This is why listening to God is so very important. And it's why it takes faith, patience, and courage to wait upon him until we know his will. Many things look like the will of God, and you don't have to understand why. All you need to understand is, are you going to be obedient or disobedient? Watch this. God's timing, it's perfect. It may appear to be late, but it's perfect timing. But it doesn't look logical. It's not logical. It's supernatural. Another biblical requirement for waiting on God, determination. Sometimes to obey God takes determination. Because of all the other people, what they think or what they say, people are going to give you a lot of opinions. Everybody has their own input. And you have to listen to God, not to people. Now, sometimes God can use a brother or a sister to give you a word from God. But you need to pray and see that it's really from God. And that requires determination. Many times people will tell you, why are you going to wait? This is a chance of a lifetime. If you wait, you're going to miss the opportunity. Watch this carefully. You say, why do you keep on saying watch this carefully? Because I want you to watch it carefully. Because it's so very important. Things may look exactly right. But something deep down inside of you, who is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And so many times things may look exactly right. But something inside of you, which is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, is saying, mm -mm -mm. if you don't obey the heeding of the Holy Spirit, he doesn't get louder and louder and louder. That's not the way it works. Opposite, it gets lower and lower and lower until you don't hear his voice anymore. Now, in the beginning, it comes out loud. Because of disobedience, it gets lower and lower and lower. And you begin to hear less and less and less. And finally, you don't hear a thing. You have to determine to wait for God, especially when you have a lot of pressure on you. Everybody has an opinion about something. It takes faith, patience, courage, determination. Another biblical requirement on waiting on God is strength. Koch. It takes strength. No, I'm not moving until God says move. I'm not making a choice until God says make a choice. It takes strength. And we go to the word, we go to the Bible, and who's the source of all our strength? Almighty God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Yeshua. Lord, if this is not your will, give me the strength to say no. Enable me through the power of the Holy Spirit to be obedient to your voice. I want to hear your voice. It takes strength to say no, especially if somebody's saying, oh, come on, come on. You ever heard those words? Oh, come on, come on. It's going to be okay. Let me tell you what's going to be okay. Nobody can change the mind of God. And this is where you have to be careful. It's easy to listen. It's very easy to hear loud voices rather than the quiet voice of the Holy Spirit. He's not going to shout. He's not going to knock down the door. He's a courteous, loving, merciful God. And he gives you a choice. Yeshua, Jesus, said it with his own mouth. Abide in me and I will abide in you. Unless God is not going to put up with it and he'll come down strong and he'll say no. It also takes endurance. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. This calls for patience and endurance on the part of people of God who keep his commandments, his word, and remain faithful to Yeshua, to Jesus. You want to hear God's voice? You want to know how to wait for God? This calls for patience and endurance. And that's a compound prophecy in Revelation 14, 12. It's for now, for the sanctification process, and it's to enter in to consummate the marriage of the bride. You're going to need a lot of endurance listening to people tell you why you should Everybody has an opinion, and everybody thinks he knows what you need to do. But the truth is, only God knows what you need to do. You endure their suggestions, their influences, their ideas, whatever it might be. But you have to decide, are you going to be obedient to God or not? Waiting upon the Lord is a lesson we learn. It's a sanctification process. I pray to Almighty God, to Yeshua, whoever is listening to this message now, or in the future, you do not forget what the Bible says. Because if you forget, you're going to find yourself in big trouble. We live in a fallen world. This world is full of trouble. This world is full of offers, full of suggestions of how you should do this and how you should do that. There's only one ultimate 
supreme voice that you listen to, and that is God, Yeshua. If I'm going to wait upon him and listen to him, it takes faith, patience, courage, determination, strength, and endurance. That means I'm willing to listen to you, wait for you, God, no matter what, until you show me what to do. Obey God, leave all the consequences to him, and wait for the Lord until you know what he requires of you. Thank you for joining me. I pray this teaching has blessed you as it has blessed me over the years. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Work the harvest together, bring the gospel back to Jerusalem, and go home. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua, Jesus, her Yeshua, like a blazing torch. And we know that he's coming back with fire in his eyes, that blazing torch, as the line of the tribe of Judah to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Ye Yehuda, the line of the tribe of Judah, the great I am, Jesus Yeshua. Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah. Amen. And together, we will unmask the Chaldean spirit. Straight from the land of Israel and right out of the heart of Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat comes Zev's brand new book, Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. The subtitle reads, A Messianic Rabbi's Stunning Supernatural Journey to Zion and the Life-Changing Treasures He Uncovered Along the Way. It's being described by readers as explosive, deeply moving, an unbelievable journey, a world of perspective and insight. Dr. Tom Horn, CEO of Skywatch TV and an acclaimed best-selling author says, Zev truly pulls back the mask on the predominant spiritual battle of the last days, and he does it by metaphorically taking you by the hand and placing you right in the middle of the Holy Land. His work is scholarly, thought-provoking, and tantalizing. My name is Carl Gallops. I was blessed to write the foreword to Zev's book. I've read every single page of it, and I assure you it's riveting and eye-opening. Let me warn you, though, don't pick it up thinking you'll read just a handful of pages, then put it down. That'll probably be next to impossible for you to do. Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit, available at fine bookstores everywhere and at the major online bookstores as well. Get your copy now.